On Friday, April 5th, two-sport world champion Raheem Ursel looks to extend his incredible 22-fight win streak against undefeated challenger Alexis Nicholas in a kickboxing world title bout. Plus, the Rutolo brothers are back. Ty and Cade compete in a pair of high-octane submission grappling contests. The first Friday of every month is Fight Night on Prime. One Fight Night 21. Now, Brandon Six Boy Shop. Good morning, kids. Monday, April 1st. It is 9 ish a.m. on this lovely Los Angeles morning. How's everybody doing? How was your Easter? Fellas, how was your Easter? I can't hear the people watching this, but how was your Easter? It was chill. I didn't do anything. You didn't do anything? Same. Nothing? No, man, Jesus is risen, you piece of trap. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, when you have kids, it's just about chocolate bunnies and hiding Easter eggs, and you know, or if you're, you know, on the other aspect of that, religious, you, it's a pretty big day, pretty big day. Jesus has risen, you know, that's what they say. That's what they say. It's more of just a sugar high for my kiddos these days. Easter's kind of changed into something else. My question, I said this on the gram, when you get, when's the last time you get, I'll tell you what, out of all the holidays, I wouldn't mind a little Easter basket myself. Me and my brother were talking about that. We used to get, my, our aunt and used to give us Easter baskets into our damn mid twenties. It was lit. You get that hollow, my favorite stuff, big hollow Easter bunny. And I've realized, I don't know if it's inflation or demand, whatever's going on, but the Easter bunnies have slowly, the chocolate bunnies have slowly gotten smaller. Like my son handed me his, I was like, it was like this. Back in the day, I had a big, and he was hollow. And my question was, when you get that chocolate leash bunny, you eating ears first or ass first? <laughs> I, I go ears. I'm traditional. Ears, yeah, same. Ears, yeah, you're traditional. That's fine. Depends the kind of mood I'm in, you know, and how many rabbits I got waiting. <laughs> ass first. <laughs> ass first, dude. Sometimes, sometimes you eat the base and then you get up to the ears. You feel me? But yeah, nice little holiday. Nice little holiday for everybody. Um, let's jump right into the fights, kids. You had a fight night. So right now it's like, um, the UFC is just in this idle position where they're giving you these apex fight nights, or this one was, uh, where it's in, uh, Atlantic city, but there, there are these fight nights where there's a few key fights on them. There's some people you don't know. Uh, if you're a fight fan, it, it, you know, it, it quenches your thirst, I guess. There's a lot of people that are upset with these cards. I'll I'll take what I can get, man. You know, I'm not I'm not mad at it, but again, it's tough. I think it's tough uh, for the UFC to pull all all this off, and that's why they have this massive roster of fighters. Um, you know, people that have issues with the Apex Center, I I just think it's a direct business move, and the UFC has so much. So much they committed to that, that this is best for their business. Is it best for the athlete? No. Is it best for the fan base? No. But it, for a business move, that's why they do it. I assume. I assume because UFC is not lazy. But I just think logistically, it's just easy for them to pull off. Remember, this is supposed to be a temporary thing. Now it's turned into a forever thing. I think it sucks for the fighters. It sucks for the fighters. Um, and the, the fights have been all right. They've been all right. Um, this past weekend's fight night, which, you know, again, not a great card, but there were some highlights on it um, in Atlantic City. <clears throat> the biggest one was uh, Chris Weidman, Bruno Silva. Even going into this, Chris Weidman was the biggest one. Here's my thing. It's a little disrespectful to, to put Chris Weidman on a fight night that probably didn't get a ton of views. The main event wasn't a big key marquee main event so no one's kind of watching this like he only has i don't know one or two fights left for what he's done for the ufc you could put chris weidman on the undercard or somewhere on the ufc 300 it's chris weidman man y'all must have forgot that dude was a freaking freak when he was coming up such a monster i just feel like we should we meaning the ufc should just give these guys a little more especially when you know you have one or two left don't put them on fight nights nobody's watching you know but i thought chris weidman especially from his last fight that last one I was like he probably needs to retire 
this one, I was like, he looked pretty damn good. And Bruno's going into it. He's a he was an underdog going into it. Bruno Silva's no punk. No punk at all. I can't again, this is another thing. Hey, UFC, can you give him an easier fight? We only he's not trying to get to the title. He has one or two fights, for God's sakes. You know, and they they give him Bruno. Um, he you know, he was an underdog for a reason. I thought Chris looked great. I thought he looked great. I think, you know, there's a lot of guys he can beat. Now, is he beating anybody in the top 15? No. But I think he can hang around. He's a name. Everybody loves him. And if he wants to continue going, was he 40, I think, or 39? So I think he could squeeze out one or two more if that's what he wants to do. But, you know, the story on this one, which is a bit of a shame, because the story on this is the Chris Weidman eye pokes, right? And I think both are at fault here. Chris Weidman, for sure, close your fist. And then... Bruno Silva, his reaction, I mean, this dude was trying to win a freaking Oscar. I, I, good God, man. Every time he get touched, it was like the end of the world. And they get, he's a veteran. Like He's been fighting for a hot second. And Chris made a good point. He's like, my only advice to him is when you get poked in the eye, man, don't fall to the ground. So, so it's an awkward uh, situation for Chris. For Chris, yeah, take accountability. You're the one that poked him in the eyes. He didn't mean to, but you know, he kept doing it. For Bruno, as a veteran, it's like, dude, quit flailing to the ground like a Euro soccer player. Jesus Christ, man. And then the other thing that made me a little worried, I was like, what is going on here? Is Chris was winning this fight. I poked, no, I, that's why I'm not mad at the decision. Everyone's like, oh, this is ridiculous. Chris pokes him in the eye, wins the fight. Chris was winning no matter what. I poked, no, I poked. That's not why he won the fight. Chris was lighting this dude up, looked good. Uh, Bruno Silva wasn't taking a lot of chances. He was having success when he did throw punches and bunches, but it, for whatever reason, just wasn't there. Uh, Chris was beating Bruno Silva. That's why I don't have an issue with them making a, a technical decision. But um, the one thing that was kind of alarming to me is when you see guys get poked in the eye it's they're usually squinting they're on the freaking ground and then when they give them the five minutes they're kind of like oh my god and they, you know they're like they're closing one eye and blinking to get the scratch or whatever's going on bruno Silva, if you go back and watch he's just wide-eyed just kind of doesn't look like he's in pain at all now who knows what he's dealing with but it didn't look bad especially to fall to the ground so shout out to chris weidman he deserved the win he's winning the whole freaking time shit happens you know um Joaquin Buckley looked good. Again, that one was weird as well. Vicente Luque, um, you know, he kind of jumped to guard. It looked like he was forced to jump to guard. He was a little off balance, so he decided to jump to guard and then did nothing with it. So I don't know if he injured himself in the transition of jumping to the guard or hit his head or something, but he did nothing on the ground, and then Joaquin Buckley just wailed away on him. I mean, just wailed away, wailed away on him. Uh, Nate Landwehr looked good. You know, he is who we thought he was. He's a beast, fan favorite. He's like Mr. Fight Night. You know, they love put him on there. Um, our boy Andre Petrosky. You know, if you remember, Matt Mitrione knocked out uh, Derek Lewis with his hip. So Andre Petrosky, mm -hmm. it looked like he shot and then got wobbled, uh, hit his head, you know, while he's transitioned to that takedown. And then he got hit kind of in the back of the air too. So it was just like this perfect storm kind of sucked. We love, we love Andre odd, Petrovsky yeah. here. Yeah, he's, he's a man. But yeah, so I, we're not going to show this on air, but I'll just play it real quick. It was really odd. Like he just went for a takedown and just dropped. Yeah, my, but he, again, he might have hit his head on the side, like yeah, a yeah. temple or something like that. It was weird. Super weird. It was really weird. Also, it says, ever seen a hip KO? Yeah, there's a way better hip KO with Matt Mitrione, Derek Lewis. Mm. But Matt, so he goes to you know to do his thing and Derek kind of bends down to shoot in and you know matt from football his hips are explosive he kind of like leans and this hits him and then an uppercut hits him but the initial knockouts the hip mm. and that's Derek lewis hips don't lie man <laughs> hips don't lie but yeah the card again nothing to blow your hair back this weekend nothing to blow your hair back you know they're, they're just edging us to the big uh usc 300 which it's april dude that thing what is it april 13th I'll double check, but yeah, I think so. I think so. I April think April 14th, April 13th. Yeah, either 13th or 14th. You have UFC, UFC 300. So we're less than two weeks out from the big boy with that shitty poster. That poster is <laughs> just insane, dude. And the UFC is offering online like 400. I think it's like almost with shipping like $1,000 for the poster signed. It's like, good God, man. Wow. But uh, yeah, you got Brendan Allen. 
who's on a surge trying to get a redemption fight against Chris Curtis, Alex Hernandez, Damon Jackson. Again, I'm not, I know some people are really upset at these fight night cards and these apex center cards. Like it's better than nothing. And they got all this roster. They got to, you know, they got to make something happen. Would you rather them just not do it? Would you rather these fighters not have a job and get paid? Because they have so many fights. They have so many fighters to keep everybody active. This is the butterfly effect. And it's like, oh, this is ridiculous. Like, God, man, they just can't stack every single card. That's what pay-per-views are for. You know, that's what they're for. Um, Cynthia Calvillo, man, I thought she was the next champ. And she kind of fell off. But I always, I always root for her. Court McGee, Alex Morano, that's the old head one. Jermaine Duran and me. That's some, crazy, there's yeah. some names on there. Yeah. But yeah, card's not. Yeah. You're going to watch it. Of course. You're going to watch it. Best fight this weekend is on one championship. Our boys, the Rutolo twins, are competing. First time ever competing on the same freaking card. This is uh, one fight night 21. That's April 5th. Uh, Six. Or April 5th. April, April 5th 6. for us. And this is in Bangkok, heavy on the cock in Thailand. <laughs> That's in Thailand. And this is for the second U.S. primetime event uh, in a row. One fight night, 21. And they got some fun ones. In the main event, this is wild. The main event uh, for one fight night, 21. You got a kickboxing world title. You're talking tip of the spear competitors here. Two sport king. Ursel will defend his gold against Alex Nicholas. And check this out. Our boy Ursel is on a 22 fight win streak, which makes him the one world champion with the longest active winning streak. 22, you know, hardest to win 22 fights in a row. And homeboy that he's fighting, Nicholas, is straight up undefeated. He's 23 and 0. So you have a 22 fight win streak versus the undefeated 23 and 0. That's your main event. And then our boys are handsome young charismatic just so much positive energy brothers from a very different mother the rutolo brothers are back on the same freaking card ty and cade two of my faves are on the same freaking event this friday ty is scheduled to defend the one welterweight submission grappling world title against the aussie sensation uh, Mitchell, a man he's been calling out for several months. Finally, they got it done. And our boy Cade, who holds the one lightweight submission grappling world championship, both world champions in one, is uh, embracing a new challenge as he welcomes the dangerous welterweight uh, Francisco Lowe uh, to the one catch up, catch weight matchup. So that's what you got, man. That's what you got. It's a fun card. That main event is wild. If you like straight up fist cuffs, at the highest level, this is for you. And the Rutolos are straight up monsters, world class. But that's going on. This I guarantee this will be the most entertaining card you see this weekend. And that's on Amazon Prime. One Championship 21. Make sure you check it out. All right, kids, let's take a little break from chatting all the fisticuffs because this episode of The Shop Show is brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, oh, O'Reilly. Who are your bit? Whoa, they are in the business of keeping your car on the freaking road. O'Reilly Auto Parts offers friendly, helpful service and the parts knowledge you need for all your maintenance and repairs. Whatever you need, they got you covered at O'Reilly Auto Parts. I have a 20 year old truck. They have parts either in stock or in the back. And if they don't, they order it, shows up the next freaking day. They've got thousands of parts. Whatever your whip is, they got you covered. They got accessories. They got cool intakes. They got spark plugs. They got it all. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free in or out of your car. If it needs to be replaced, bam, they'll help you find the right battery for your vehicle. Whatever you need, they got you covered. Whether you're a car expert or a freaking rookie, you'll find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are super helpful. And best of all, they're friendly. I've never met a mean person at O'Reilly. Everyone's super friendly and they want to help you get the exact part so you can get it done in time. Professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are your one-stop shop for all things auto. Do it yourself and you can find what you need in store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today or visit them at O'ReillyAuto.com slash shop, S-C-H-A-U-B. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash shop. What else you got, Jen? I guess the biggest uh, news, again, we're 
we're in drought season. Let's be honest here, fellas. When it comes to the fight game, we're in drought season. So uh, when that happens, you're just open. the UFC announces some stuff that you can chat about on Monday morning. And this one made me excited. This I have a group chat with my boys, and they sent me this. And I was like, holy smokes, this is a freaking fight. You have Hamzat Shamayev versus Robert Whitaker. The UFC Saudi Arabia main event. This is a fight night. I also think this is on ABC. ABC, yeah, so it's free. This is on ABC. Um, and then the other four fights they announced are dope. One fight isn't confirmed. It's weird. UFC's doing this again. They announced Sergei Pavlovich and Alexander Volkov, uh, two Russians, Russia on Russian crime, and they didn't agree to it. Yeah, there's like uh, rumors of Jal Jalton Almeida fighting Volkov or something. I don't, I don't know what's happening exactly, but that'd be cool. But Sergey's team and Volkov's like, we didn't agree to it. what? Yeah. Like we found out when they did. no, we ain't, two Russians ain't fighting. That's not what we do. So we'll see. That's a good fight though. Pavlovich Volkov's good, but I'll take uh, Almeida Volkov or Al Almeida uh, Pavlovich. Great fight. Either yeah, yeah. Sign me up. But yeah, there's no Russian on Russian crime on there. Then Kelvin Gaslam, Daniel Rodriguez, that's a, that's a fun one. one. Yeah. Johnny Walker, Ozdemir, Amazing. take my money. Yep. Our boy with one eye that looks like Nick Davis, but he can fight his tail <laughs> off. Dude, they look Knock alike. Head off. They the look same, so much alike. Same person. <laughs> I know. Dude. Same person. One can fight, one can do podcast producing. <laughs> They're the same person. Different eyes. Same person, one has a red beard. Yeah. But for the main event with Hamzat, Robert Whitaker, and... This is well documented if you watch this show. I'm a huge Hamzat fan. Huge. That being said, and I don't know if this is a popular opinion. I, I don't know the reaction online. Um, Robert Whitaker's the worst matchup for Hamzat, especially five rounds. And I would assume that Robert Whitaker is an underdog. I'm taking Whitaker, especially in five rounds. Because if we just go based off the last few fights of Hamzat, yeah, he's a minus 160. Robert Correct. Whitaker plus 140. That line's going to change. I definitely would bet on Robert Whitaker. Now, can Hamzat win? Absolutely. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, is this is a massive jump up in competition for Hamzat at middleweight. Or even when he's welterweight, this is by far the toughest fight. And he seems to have some cardio issues and then, you know, if that Kamaru Usman was five rounds, there's argument, man, Kamaru was just turning on. That could have got dicey for Hamzat. Now you're fighting a true middleweight. Not only are you fighting a true middleweight, you're fighting one of the best of all time. And he's only lost to Izzy, and he's lost to DDP. That's it. He looked great against Paulo Costa, a big-ass middleweight. So... The reason I put money on Robert Whitaker is I know what Robert Whitaker is going to bring to the table. And we just saw him had a you know, great performance against Paulo Costa. When it comes to Hamzat, I don't know. The, the verdict's still out. So I think we're, we know, you know Whitaker's a first-class bona fide Hall of Famer right now. With Hamzat, there's still a lot of questions, and this is going to answer a lot. Is he the guy we think he is? Is he the actual boogeyman? Then the other question, the elephant in the room is, you know, this is the uh, this is a you know uh, title contenders elimination fight. So whoever wins is going to get the next title shot, supposedly. Uh, now, if it's Whitaker, who knows? Hamzat wins, he one hundred percent is getting a title shot. And if you're the UFC, clearly something's going on with bringing Hamzat to America. Clearly, the guy can't fight here. So they made this fight happen in Saudi Arabia. Now, remember, they announced a card before. Saudi Arabia royalty went, what are you doing? This is trash. This is an Apex card. Get that shit out of here. We paid too much for that. They went, my bad. And then they give us this fire-ass card. Shout out to the Saudi Arabians. That was sick. Thank you for this card. Way to flex on them boys. Because we got a great card now. But if you're the UFC and Hamzat were to beat Whitaker and he's the you know Vegas favorite right now according to the odds, it's a huge task for him. But if you were to you know, beat Whitaker and you give him a title shot. So you're saying the champions can have to go over to the Middle East? Like the, the champions not going to be able to fight in America? So A, just for him to become champion, 
you're going to have to ask the current champion, whether it's DDP, uh, let's say they do DDP Izzy, let's say it's Izzy, whoever it is, is going to be a, you know, the champ is going to have the belt and they have to bow down and bend the knee and go over to wherever Hamza can fight. That's awkward. And then let's say Hamza becomes champ, which is, you know, could very well happen if he gets past Whitaker and then his next fight. So let's say he becomes champ. Now your current champ in the middleweight division, which is a massive division, can't fight in America. I don't know what happens. I don't know what happens. I'm sure the UFC is uh, having conversations about this. No one wants to talk about it. It's like the elephant in the room. No one wants to talk about we can't travel to America. We don't know why. You know, and he has these long layoffs. And you're like, what is going on? They just, no one says anything. Hamza doesn't say anything. We just, we don't know what's going on, but there's clearly an issue. Clearly an issue. The only, the, and UFC smart, and anything I say isn't something they've already talked about, I'm sure, or they're, they're thinking about in the future. Remember, Dana and Trump are besties. And if Trump were to become president, which if you look at the, the polls right now, uh, the Vegas odds are that he would become president um, next year. Well, by next year, if Hamza's your champ, I bet old Trumpy Trump could make some moves so Hamza could get back in the American fight. Just going out on a limb. Like, say your best friend was president. <laughs> And you're like, hey, dude, our champ can't get in here for whatever reason. He's on the no-fly list. You're like, yeah, I'll take care of that. Like if, you know, Callum's my best friend. If Brian Callum was president and I ran the UFC, I'm like, hey, dude, can you just kind of get this guy in? Like, yeah, I'll take care of it. Easy peasy. Japanesey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I'm sure the UFC is kind of assuming that stuff. Like there's a whole thing here that no one's talking about. As far as Hamza becoming champ, the difficulties of getting him into the States. Because – as the UFC, you're not going to, and they're fast tracking him, especially in the middleweight division to, to, you know, become champion. Cause you know, he's this boogeyman, but there's, there's been some kinks in his armor. The Usman fight, like, Oh, that's another two rounds. That could get dicey. The Gilbert Burns fight, like that wasn't great. And no one loves Hamza out more than me. I think, you know, the world of them, but I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out that Saudi Arabia card. If, if he is who we think he is with all the questions will be answered there. Because he goes and smokes Robert Whitaker, like, oh, yeah, he was the guy. That's why we hyped him up. But the, all signs don't point that he's going to walk through Whitaker. That seems like a very tough fight, especially as it goes into the third, fourth, fifth round. Tough, tough matchup. Mm -hmm. But for the UFC, they're like, all right, man, we'll fast track you. You got to get through Robert Whitaker, though. We can't just jump you into the line and give you good matchups. Here's Robert Whitaker. And I was told by people very close to Sean Strickland, very close, that Robert Whitaker was the next fight for Strickland. So I don't know how this came about because they were going to do Strickland Whitaker. So you have, we don't know what they're going to do with DDP. So you have DDP out there. You have Izzy, right? Are they going to do Izzy DDP? Um, and they have Hamzat matched up. You have Whitaker matched up. So Strickland's kind of this oddball out right now unless they give him the immediate rematch where in all fairness, I think he deserves the rematch. That was a freaking razor close fight. I thought he won the fight. Nobody got robbed, but I thought he won the fight. So why wouldn't you run that back? And Strickland's a massive name. Why wouldn't you give him the opportunity? Why would you risk give him a guy like Strickland or insert, you know, Hamzat, whoever you want him to fight? Why risk? Cause he loses that one. It's going to take a lot of work to get him back to the title. And, you know, out of all the guys we're mentioning, especially in America, Hamza not so much, but internationally, Hamza's bigger than Strickland. But in America, there's no fighter bigger than Strickland in the middleweight division. So if you're the UFC, just from a marketing standpoint, and it's not like he got knocked out. So, you know, if you're a Strickland fan, I would say, which I am, I would say that he has the best argument to fight for the world title more so than any, more so than Izzy. But then I'm sure the UFC is like, well, what would sell more pay-per-views? Izzy's comeback fight against DDP that has a history. They hate each other, right? Remember the whole N-word and all that stuff and the true African? So there's, mm -hmm. we can roll with that. We can create a dope sizzle for that. 
that's probably gonna sell more pay-per-views. Like, what do you think sells better? Izzy DDP or Strickland DDP? Personally? Yeah, man, you guys in the room. <laughs> Izzy, man. I like yeah. Izzy DDP. Yeah, I think Izzy sells more. Izzy sells more. Which fight would you would you rather have though? I'll take either of them. Yeah, me too. I'll take I'm, either I'm of them. I'm pretty excited to see Izzy again, though. I'd probably take Izzy. Me yeah. too. Izzy's one of my favorite people yeah. on this planet. Yeah. yeah. Whatever they want to do. Like, Izzy could give, even go up to 205 if he wanted. I think, you know, the division's up there better if they don't give him, like, Yawn or those big grapplers. But there's some strikers. Jamal Hill would be fun for Izzy. You know, uh, Yuri. Obviously, Alex Pierre is right there. So, he, you know, I think he could even go to 205 and leave the middleweight division. But I would like to see Izzy DDP. Let's take a little break because this episode of the shop show is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Progressive Insurance. Listen, insurance can be a big take on. You're like, oh, I'll just push it off for now. It's such a hassle. No, 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 not with Progressive. Progressive, you can get an auto quote from Progressive Insurance. It's freaking easy and you can save money by doing it right from your phone how easy it is drivers who switch uh to progressive save nearly 750 dollars on average and auto customers qualify for an average of seven discounts discounts for having multiple vehicles on your policy being a homeowner and so much more so just like your favorite pod progressive will provide you with 24 7 365 days a year so you're protected no matter what Quote your car insurance at Progressive.com to join the over 28 million drivers who trust Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates national average 12-month savings of $744 by new customers surveyed who saved with Progressive between June 2022, May 2023. Potential savings will vary. Discounts not available in all states and situations. Progressive. But if we're doing what I think is right, you would do... Strickland DDP. When the champ is kind of screwed over like that, or it's a super controversial decision like that, again, nobody got robbed, but I thought Strickland won that fight. When it's even up for debate, as a champion, he deserves the rematch. That's how it should go. You just don't move on and then risk giving Strickland some, you know, monster and then he falls back in the queue. Like there's a reason and he's his name's bigger than ever. So I just think A from what the right thing to do. Be from a marking standpoint. The risk for him not to fight the title and lose another one, all right, then you lose a massive star, and you need stars. They need stars. And Strickland's one of the biggest stars. He didn't get knocked out, didn't get outclassed. Yeah. A lot of people thought he won. It was super close. It was including super me. Close, yeah. Super close, and on top of that, like, uh, who definitively, okay, so yeah, so Strickland definitively beat is he that one time, right? 100%. Yeah, so if there was like someone that, that should be in that place to fight Drickus for a rematch, it should be Strickland, but I personally would just want to watch Izzy versus du, uh, Duplessis. Also, think about, so Strickland become champion, goes to Australia to beat Izzy on short notice. Goes to Australia. American goes to Australia, beats him, and then loses his title. I think the fight with DDP was in Canada. I forgot. Pretty sure it was in Canada. Can my can the American great fight in America for God's sakes? Scotia Bank Arena, yeah. Canada. That's Toronto. That's Toronto. Yeah, I think he does Canada deserve Canada's it. just, you know, Canada's a shit show now. It's like super woke. So you put Strickland up there. Who knows how the judges feel about Strickland up there, right? Loses that fight. You sent him to Australia on short notice, won that fight. You kind of owe it to the guy. <laughs> you know? Kind of owe it to him. Yeah. Mm. Now, I don't know if the UFC operates like that. We're like, yeah, we have put him in some tough situations, you know? Would you prefer that fight over Izzy Duplessis? I think the right thing to do when you're a champion and you lose a controversial decision is do the rematch immediately. I'm, I've always been on that side. Mm. Like, he's earned it. This is how it goes. That's the right thing to do. The guy's your champion, and a lot of people think Strickland won that fight, and you're just going to move on? No, 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 no. No, no, no. We need a clear winner there. Like Volkov, Max Holloway. We got that three times. Like they run shit back all the time. Yeah, they've been. Now, it, yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Like if, if it was it wasn't a championship fight, you move on. You move on. But when it's a champion loses like that, you run it back immediately. It's the right thing to do. But again, I don't know with the rankings, you know, all that shady shit with the right who does those? It's all political. it's all it's weird. But if there's a like a, a real fight sport, the right thing to do, Strickland DDP. But Izzy's one of my favorite people on the planet. So you want to give it to him? I'll, I get it. Izzy's great. Love Izzy. Mm -hmm. But if I was, you know, head of the table, it's DDP Strickland. I would announce that a month after that fight. I would announce it like this. It's the right thing to do. But then would you change your tune if the Whitaker... Uh, Hamzat fight is crazy, and there's a clear like that knockout. Like stuff. Hamzat just starches him. Yeah. No, I because because Strickland deserves it. You do Strickland DDP, get it clear. DDP wins again by decision. Okay, we're, that's over. Then Hamzat's just waiting in the wings. It's not like he's active all the time. He don't give a fight. He fights once a year, sometimes once every two years. So Hamzat's there. Yeah, but before that Hamzat Robert Whitaker fight. I would announce before that, and uh, they might, I guarantee they do this. They're going to announce who DDP's fighting before June. So it's going to set up Hamzat if you were to starch Whitaker. Because the other thing is, let's say Whitaker beats Shamayev. Well, he just recently, kind of recently, got starched by DDP. So if that's a title eliminator fight, if Whitaker wins, does he get the title? All signs point yes, even though we just saw him get starched by DDP. But all points would, si points would say he deserves it. He beat Paulo Costa and he beat Hamzad? God damn. That's a tough, that's a tough go, man. I, I, Whitaker deserves it. So the middleweight division is kind of all bundled up. But th there's one thing, you know, again, Strickland's the outlier here. I think he deserves the rematch. Hope they give it to him. If they don't, there's one guy, and everyone's talking about, you know, oh, we could do Strickland Costa, right? They're both coming off a loss, big names. You could do that, sure. Um, everybody else is matched up above that. Everybody's matched up. Brendan Allen, if he beats Chris Curtis, I don't know if you launch Brendan Allen. Even He probably deserves it, but... He's bubbling around there, eight set, right? He's number eight, number seven. So if he got a win, but he's fighting a lower ranked guy, even though the guy beat him. <sighs> Vittori's out. He's injured. Um, Jared Cannonier. It's a tough one. That's a tough one. It's just because it's Strickland's already yeah. fought him too. Um, but there's one guy on there who's. You know, he's not ranked in the top 10, but we all know he's a top 10 guy. And if he were to just absolutely starch homeboy at UFC 300, Bo Nickel. Bo Nickel's on the fast track. They're just, it's this slow burn. And I think they're just, they've just been at the gates going, hold, hold. And it's just a matter of time before they release that, that freaking great white all American hype. And he's, they, he puts, they release the hound, Bo Nickel, on these top five guys. And I can see them throwing him into the mix. I'm like, all right, you've asked for it. You said you beat Hamzat your first fight. And they clearly see something in Bo Nickel, put him on UFC 300 main card. So if he were to absolutely starch homeboy, which he probably will, I could see them being like, yep, he beats Cody. I could see him like, all right, here's Strickland. If they don't give Strickland the rematch, they could do something weird like that. I could see that. I'd love that fight. Oh, yeah. Love it. Take a little break. This episode of The Shop Show is brought to you by Shopify. When I started podcasting, an online store was the furthest thing from my mind. I was just trying to get this podcast off the ground. Then we started selling a few things, a few Fire and the Kid merch. Me and my brother were shipping direct from me from my garage, and it was tough. And thank God we linked up with Shopify because it's easy. It's so easy just because we use Shopify. Shopify is a global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business, from the launcher online shop stage in your garage to the first real life store stage, all the way to we just hit a million order stage. Shopify is there to help you grow. Whether you're auction off, whatever it is, autograph apparel, uh, skis, car parts, whatever it is, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. 
Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout up to 36% better compared to the other leading commerce platforms. Sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S., Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's extensive help resource are there to support your success every step of the way. Because business that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash shop, S-C-H-A-B, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash shop, all lowercase, now to grow your business no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash shop, all lowercase. Cha-ching. All right, Jim, what do you got, bud? All right. Um, Enough you're... about this middleweight. Huh? Real Housewives of the Middleweight Division talk. <laughs> um, so you're f- friends with both Luke Rockhold and Joe Schilling, right? Correct. Um, are, are they friends too or no? I don't um, know. I mean, they're cool for sure. Yeah, so I guess yeah. they're both going to fight each other in karate combat. April 20th, Dubai. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Which is pretty cool. You have GSP. Yeah, they got some big names doing the thing. Uh, Yeah. It's straight stand-up? It has to be the karate rules for karate combat. So Which it's like, means what? It's like uh, striking. Uh, they have like their own rule set. So even when you drop someone, you have a certain amount of seconds to like keep hitting them. Tough fight for our boy Luke. I mean, Joe Schilling is world class striker. Kickboxer for right sure. Yeah. If this is MMA, MMA and there's grappling. I mean, Luke's a savage on the ground. Luke mops the floor with him. But just striking, tough night in the office for our boy Luke. Mm. Yeah, but that's pretty cool. I, I thought they were like homies, but yeah, I don't know. Um. Also, Luke Rockhold is doing a coaching thing with Tyron Woodley for Hardcore FC, some sort of promotion. It's, it's an up-and-coming promotion, and it's sort of like the ultimate fighter. It's a reality show. A reality show, on. but the coaches are not supposed to fight each other at, at the end. Of, so it's a little bit different, but that's pretty cool that they're both uh, doing something. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. Good for Luke and, and Woodley yeah, yeah. staying active. Um. Yeah, it's tough, right? Like the whole production of Ultimate Fighter, like a lot goes into it to make that thing pop. So if they have, you know, funding, it could be cool. And where's it going to be released at? Does it say? I don't know. Oh, United Arab Emirates. HFC Fight Fight Show Reality and filmed in the United Arab Emirates over the next six weeks. I bet them boys are getting paid. Yeah, dude, there's there's so much money there. They release it out there. Yeah, it could be cool. All righty. Um, so remember the guy that took a, he bit the dude in the arm. Yeah. He got released by the UFC. In death threats. So d- yeah, so many different things. He's only, I didn't realize he's only, he's only 20 years old. So he's a young dude. Super prospect too. That's the bummer. Yeah. Undefeated. And uh, I guess the NSAC is holding his, his purse. So he doesn't even get the money for the fight. Yeah, man. He can't um, be biting people. There's going to be real No, that's so messed up. But the thing is, like, he did this huge apology, but he didn't say why he did it. Like, I don't know. I don't think he knows why. He's just, like, panicked or something? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I've never seen it, anything like it. This is too long to read, but, uh, yeah, basically, he, he regrets it and apologizes. It, and even his opponent was like, I don't want him to get cut from the, the UFC. Since my dream became a nightmare. Yeah. And then the money was supposed to go, not for him, but for his family. It sucks all around. Especially when his opponent's saying like he doesn't want him to get cut, you know. But you oh, can't man. do that. Fighting though. is how I make ends meet. How I'm able to pay my rent. That's how I'm able to pay for medicine. It's how I'm able to take care of my sick family members. Yeah, I, it's how I support them. Buy food. Eesh. Can't be biting guys. I know that's the thing though. You can't. Uh, like what made him f- like flip? You know. He says, "Please just let me have my career again. Please give me a chance to come back and redeem myself." That ain't happening, Bubba. As far as UFC goes. Definitely not. Yeah. No, you're seeing it happening. Uh, yeah. Why did you bite him? That would be the one thing I would want to hear. Like, okay, I, I, if he said, if he explained, like, this is what I was thinking at the time, but he doesn't, he's just like, I, I apologize. I regret it. It also doesn't really matter why he did it. You can't do that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you can't do it. I no, mean, dim, I can't imagine. Dim the <laughs> rules, man. Dim the rules. It's a professional sport. You can't be biting people. And imagine if they were to 
be lenient with him. Like that's precedent setting. You can't fight people. No, yeah, you can't. Yeah, it's like remember when Paul De- Daly punched Josh Koscheck yeah. after? It's like you can't have it. Like mm-hmm. it sucks, man. I love Paul Daly. He's one of my favorites. And then the UFC is like, you're out forever. Yeah. Like there's no coming back. Like UFC ain't happening. Uh, this is pretty cool. So, ooh, our boy Haggerty. Yeah, Super Haggerty D. Super Leg was just great. Also, but Xiong, who uh, most recently beat uh, Angela Lee. Yeah. Kind kind of controversial, right? But, but so Angela Lee beat her first time, and then she beat her the second time. Yeah. And she's gonna fight Stamp Fairtex. Ooh, that's a fun one. That's in, in your Denver. Ho- in your hood, yeah. Ooh, good chance your boy's one, gonna be there. When is that? One one sixty eight. Uh, was it? Haggerty Super League, super fun. I think September. Yeah, September, September 6th. 6th. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's a fun one. That's a tough, tough fight for a stamp, but uh, that'd be a great fight. All righty. Let's go to... So GSP was recently on the podcast with Kamaru Usman and uh, Henry Cejudo. And he was saying like, respectively that the time that he was supposed to fight Khabib, you know, there was a, there was a time that they were actually supposed to fight. It never really happened though. Uh, he said he would have actually, he believes he would have beaten him. And this Are people is, mad that GSP would say that. No, not, no. Did they expect them to be like, you know, it'd been tough. He probably would have edged me out. Like why? No, GSP said that he would probably beat me or I, you know, he, he has no idea what would happen, but at that moment he thought he would actually beat him. And then this is what could be responded with. I learned from this guy a lot. Even here, he talked about me. It's so interesting. GSP all day. Yeah, so it's all respect. Yeah. Two, I mean, two legends, super respectful legends. Mm-hmm. Uh, did the, What year was that when they were? <sighs> I don't know the year. And then GSP also said John Jones is the GOAT. There's yeah, no he did. Argument. He I said think, even despite all I like think the. Everybody in the fight game, like if you're, if you know fighting, like that's your GOAT. And plus, he trained with them. You trained with them. Yeah. You guys know the. The We've seen what, details of John we, Jones. Yeah, I firsthand seen him beat the shit out of me, but <laughs> also a ton of other people yeah. that are world class. And it's not, it wasn't close, dude. Yeah. And you're like, this dude's from a different planet. And then he, that translates into the octagon. He's never lost. Like, that's your goat. Yeah, and GSP was saying, like, how he's not only like skilled, like super skilled and everything, just his IQ. toughness, his, just his toughness. Like, he, he just doesn't stop. They barely yeah. trained for Augustus Finn, and it's like the best fight of all time. Yeah. And still won. There's, there there'll never be another John Jones. It's wild. All righty. Yeah, but I'm trying to think when GSP and Khabib were s- supposed to fight. What year Let me just that Google that real quick. Yeah, I, I guess the question is if it's, it's, if it's GSP in their prime and Khabib in their prime, I'd probably lean towards GSP. Yeah, either way, it just it never happened anyway. But yeah, I'd lean towards GSP. Uh, both being in their primes, you're saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a quick one. Brian Moreno, he's just taking a break from MMA. He says he's not he's not retired, dude. He went to, through so many freaking wars. Uh, but he says mo- mostly about his mind, good like his him. mind space. Yeah, yeah, good for him. Yeah, but not retiring, just taking a break. Um, I saw this on MMA Uncensored. This I don't bum, know. This is yeah. I think this is real. This bummed me out. Okay, so I don't know if it's one hundred percent real. But I, I always told stuff. you guys like, and I'll, I'll be on the street and people are like, dude, Tyson, Jake Paul. How do you see it going? I go, I, I got to know the rules before I give you my input. Mm-hmm. And then let's say these are the rules. Uh, both fighters wore sixteen ounce gloves rather than the usual ten ounce gloves. So that means. To get a knockout with 16 ounce gloves is very difficult, more difficult. Uh, rounds will be scheduled with a duration of two minutes rather than three. And then here, this should be the biggest note here. No official judges will score the fight. Therefore, no winner unless a KO. I would bet my bottom dollar this fight goes to, and there's no winner. Decision? Or there's not no decision. decision yeah. No, just just it just, it just goes we're in the same <laughs> spot ends. mike tyson's not gonna get embarrassed jake paul's not gonna be embarrassed they're in 16 ounce gloves but but again i i tell you guys this like this is the trojan horse to get the ufc into the into netflix that's all this is it'd be the most watched fight of all time 
that there's no finish, there's no decision. It's kind of this weird fight, and all it is is a Trojan horse to get the UFC to Netflix. So whether Jake Paul realizes it or not, he's helping the UFC tremendously. I'm sure he's aware. He's helping the UFC tremendously. So with the 16 ounce, I'm not familiar with this, but 16 ounce versus 10 ounce. So you've used both those gloves, right? In practice, you'd go 16, 16 ounce, ounce. So you don't hurt each other. So it's not that impact. Like there's not, it's not as much of an impact as no. it is with a 10 ounce glove. No, not even close. Okay. It's, it's what you train with. Now you can knock people out in training, catch yeah. them right. So there's still a factor there where if this is a hundred percent real fight and they're going a hundred percent, and you know Jake were to catch Tyson on the chin, or Tyson catches Jake on the chin with sixty ounce gloves, you could still do some damage, but nowhere near like ten ounce gloves, not even close. Mm. So it, it seems like everything's set up where this thing's just going to go all the rounds, and there's no winner. So it seems like it's leaning towards exhibition, not a real hardcore. Yep. Boxing but again, match. I don't care about any of this. I, don't, I care about the UFC. I don't care about any of this. Good for Jake Paul. They could have said, and they have headgear on, and they're wearing dresses. I don't care. <laughs> All I care about is the UFC, you know, the best thing for the business, get to Netflix, this is your canary in the coal mine. Because Netflix, I'm like, holy shit, this is whatever it is, 100 million viewers, that's wild. And then the, it gives UFC leverage go, yeah, we actually have this guy, this guy, and can provide this much content. And then they sign for like $5 billion like the WWE did. That's what's going to happen. So whether you hate Jake Paul or not, he's actually helping you if you like the UFC. Now, if you don't have Netflix, you're probably really sad. All right. Um, have you seen this yet, this interviewer? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> this interviewer, she's super famous. So if she was uh, originally, with, or she's still with ESPN? I forgot what ESPN it was. ESPN let but, her go. Okay, yeah. So she was with ESPN. Her name's Sage, Sage Steel Steel. or something like that. She's yeah, yeah, yeah. very famous. Yes. So she, she 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 got famous too. She was on ESPN for a hot second, one of their best anchors. And then she just didn't appreciate them like pushing the agenda of transgenders competing and you know some of the woke stuff they were doing. She spoke up, up about it, and, you, and ESPN let her go. Mm. She's a monster. She's been in the space forever. Super well respected. Like, and some people think this like the Howie Mandel thing. Yeah, I don't know. I, now it's it is, not because Stage Steals like you're talking legit journalist. She's okay. not going to be like, let me mess up your name, and then air it so I look like a dumbass. <laughs> She's not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. But so then she, also, this interview was not recent. Oh, it wasn't? No. If you watch the interview, the whole interview, they're talking about I forget which fight, but it's like two months ago, okay. maybe a month ago. So it's not like it happened last week. So that's why I'm like, oh, because they it's not live either. So they could edit it, but Sage wasn't purposely confusing Dana for Rogan. She legit made a mistake. It's a mistake. But and twice. Then, twice. And then her producers, I guarantee, were like, this, just leave it in. I know you don't want, but leave it in. It's gonna go super viral. Yeah, yeah. And of course it and did. And Sage is like at the expense of me looking like a moron. That's what they did. Mm -hmm. But no, she's like super well respected. Okay. Yeah. So legit journalist. I don't want to play it, but yeah, she she made the mistake twice. <laughs> Which is I love Dan's like, what? You don't know who you thought you were interviewing Joe Rogan? I come all the way down here from downtown, like bust my ass to get here. You don't know who you're interviewing? <laughs> and then Rogan, let me see if I can just pull it up. For the play. mothership. Yes, you saw that, right? Yeah. <laughs> that was so cool. Tight move by Joe. Let me just pull up real quick. Yeah, he did this. He posted <laughs> <laughs> Joe Rogan and friends with Dana White's picture. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. That was super funny. All right. Um, and Joe and Dana was cool about it, but why do you have his uh, shoes off? No one watched the interview in here. Yeah. I just saw the little clips, but I didn't see the it, shoes he off. He has his shoes off in it. You know, oh. Getting cozy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's pretty much it, dude. All right, man. Um, Is that it, kids? That's it. So you got one championship this Friday with a 22 win streak. 22 in a row. That's damn near impossible at this level. 22 and 0. Ursel's 22 and 0 in his last 22 versus the young freaking Alexis Nicholas, who's 23 and 0. That's for a world lightweight kickboxing world title. And then you got my boys, the Rutolo brothers, competing on the same event this freaking Friday. 
Make sure you check it out on Amazon Prime. It's going to be a fun one. Then you have the UFC Apex Fight Night with Brendan Allen and uh, Curtis going down on Saturday. So it, it'll, it'll quench your thirst, fight fans. Enjoy the fights. I'll see you guys around town. Be nice to each other. Like, subscribe, do all the stuff they tell you to do. All right, kids. Love you.